This is a HC06 module. It's a popular way of adding Bluetooth to your Arduino projects. This is no ordinary module though. This one has been flashed with a firmware which is HID compatible. This means it can act like a Bluetooth keyboard, mouse or even game controller. In this video I'm going to show you how you turn this $3 module into something way more useful. The firmware that comes with the HC06 is not HID compatible. But there are other more expensive modules such as the RN42 which are HID compatible. Luckily for us they use the same chip so it's just a matter of lifting the firmware from the RN42 and putting it on the HC06. The RN42 module is about $15 more than the HC06 so if you don't want to go through the hassle of flashing a module to get a HID one that's still a really good option. Evan Kale has a really good video on this topic which I'll link to below. The reason I'm making this video is because Evan's method involves a parallel port for flashing the Bluetooth modules. Parallel ports haven't been common on computers in a long time. I haven't seen one in maybe 10 years when I specifically revived an old computer just for the parallel port so I could JTAG some Xbox 360s. So in this video I'm going to show you how I flash the modules with a $2 FTDI breakout board which should work with any computer. We'll need the following things. We'll obviously need a Bluetooth module, either a HC05 or a HC06 will work for this. These are about $3 delivered. Next we're going to want to get an FTDI breakout board. These are about $2 delivered. We specifically want to get the ones that have the pins broken out at the side because we'll be using them. Next we'll need some male header pins to solder to the FTDI breakout board. These are about $0.50 cent delivered. We'll also need a mini USB cable. And then finally we'll need some wires, some resistors and a breadboard. The first thing that we want to do is solder the male headers onto the FTDI board, so do that for all the pins. To flash the module we need to connect to the four SPI pins that are labelled here. The first thing we need to do with the module is to cut off the plastic sleeve to access these pins. Evan had this cool trick for connecting to these pins using a clothes peg. I couldn't get the wires to stay in place but maybe you'll have better luck with it. I just ended up soldering four different colour wires directly to the pins. It didn't take too much time at all. To be honest I spent more time trying to make the clothes peg programmer. Now you're ready to wire the module up to the breakout board. If you pause the video here you should be able to copy the wiring. Whoop! Just kidding! I got it! Boop! <laughs> The first thing you want to do before you wire anything up is set this jumper to the 3.3 volt position because the Bluetooth module is a 3.3 volt chip. Next you want to connect ground to ground and then 5 volts to the VCC line. This is a little bit confusing because I just said it was a 3.3 volt device but it has a built in regulator and the 3.3 volt line on the FTDI chip doesn't have enough current to power it. And then finally you want to connect up the SPI pins as shown in the diagram above. It's recommended that you use around 220 ohm resistors. I used 180 ohm and they seem to work fine. Now we'll take a look at the software that we'll need. I'll leave a link to all of it in the description below. The first thing we need is the flashing tools of the company CSR. You need to register an account to download it. It will complain about having a non-business email address but a Gmail one worked for me. After you've registered they'll send you an email with your password so type in your username and the password that they emailed you. After I logged in I couldn't actually find a link to download the tools so I'll leave a link in the description below to that page directly and you can download them from there. The software that we want is called BlueSuite. Next we want to download the drivers for the FTDI chip so it can be used to program these modules. You click on the releases and download the zip from there. There's a lot of good information on the readme of this page so it's worth checking out if you run into any problems. And finally you want to download a tool called Zadig which is used to install a generic driver for the FTDI module. After all the tools are downloaded, first install the BlueSuite software. When that's installed, extract the FTDI drivers, then click into the folder, then into the libwin32 folder and copy the only file there. You then want to navigate to where the BlueSuite software was installed. For me that was my C drive, program x86, CSR and then BlueSuite. There should be a file here called USB 
spi.dll. You want to rename this and just to back it up. After you've renamed it, you then want to paste in the other one that you copied. This should be much larger in size than the first one. Before you launch the Zadig tool, you first want to plug in your FTDI device. I was sure the first time that I launched the tool that the FTDI device appeared in this dropdown straight away, but if it doesn't, just click Options and then List All Devices. You want to select the FT232R USB UART device. I already have the driver installed, so it appears over here on the left. But what you want to do is select libusbk on the right and then click the install button below. We should now be ready to go, so launch the blue flash tool. If you don't see the processor running message, there's something wrong, so check your wiring and make sure you don't have any shorts. The first thing we want to do is click the stop processor button. Once it's ready, you then want to click the dump button. This will create a backup of the firmware that's on the chip. So just give it a name and we'll save it for later in case we ever want to go back to the original state of the module. When I was first trying this out, I was getting a lot of errors when I had the FTDI programmer plugged into a USB hub. It took me nearly 10 times to get a successful dump. But when I plug the programmer directly into my computer, it works perfectly every time. When finished, click the Start Processor button. Next, we want to launch the PS Tool app to back up the settings. When the app launches, select SPI and then select your FTDI module in the port dropdown. This will display a current list of all the settings for your module. We want to go to File and then click Dump to take a copy of all the current settings. Save this file somewhere easy to get to because we'll be using it again in a minute. It took about one minute to fully back up all the settings of the module. After these two steps, you should have the following files. You should have a PSR, and then you should also have an XDV and an XPV. Next, we need to get the firmware from the RN42 module. Evan shows the pin layouts here, so you just want to connect it up to your FTDI programmer and back it up the same way we just did with the HC06 module. You then want to go to where you took the backup of the HC06 module and create a new text document. We'll call this update.psr. We then want to open the settings file that we created when we used the PS Tool app. This is the one that's called .psr. We also want to open the new file that we just created. This should be blank. We now need to copy some of the settings from the settings backup into the new file. So the first one we need is pskey underscore bdaddr. The next one we need is pskey underscore anna underscore ftrim. And then the last one that we need is pskey underscore anna underscore freq. When you're finished, your new file should look like this, just with the three entries. Go ahead and save it. We now want to open the blue flash software again. The first thing we want to do is stop the processor. We then want to choose file and we'll navigate to our RN42 backup. Once that's selected, you can click the download button. This will replace the firmware on your HC06 module with that of the RN42. This will take about two minutes to flash. Once it's finished uploading, again, we want to click the start processor button. You then want to open the PS Tool application like we did before. Your module now has the RN42 firmware, but it also has the RN42 settings, so we need to replace some of these with the settings that we backed up originally. So what you do here is go to File and then click Merge. You then want to select your update.psr file that we created earlier. This will overwrite the settings just for the three entries in that file. Now if we read the Bluetooth address again, you'll see that it's changed. It now matches the address in the update.psr file. A quick way to check that the firmware flash has been successful is you'll notice that the LEDs behave differently on the two different firmwares. Now let's test the module out. I'd recommend leaving the SPI pin soldered on until you've tested it at least once. I'm going to use an ESP8266 with the module, as it's also a 33 volt device, there's no need for level shifting. 
The other reason I want to use the ESP8266 is that its software serial is capable of running at 115200 baud rate, which is the same as the Bluetooth module. This sketch is available on my GitHub page and I'll link to it in the description below. Basically, it's a software serial connection connected to your hardware serial connection. This means that we can send messages through the serial monitor. Any messages that we send will get forwarded to the Bluetooth module. If the Bluetooth module responds, any messages that it sends will get displayed on the serial monitor. After you flash the sketch, open the serial monitor. Change it to no line ending and also make sure the baud rate is correct. Type in three dollar symbols and click enter. It should return CMD to you. You now want to change the line ending back to new line. So next you want to type in SF comma one. This will do a factory reset. The next thing we want to type in is S tilde comma six. This sets it to HID mode. Now we want to change the name of the device, so SN comma whatever you want the name to be. Then finally you want to type in SH comma 0230. This changes it to be a keyboard and mouse combo device. We then want to type R comma 1 to reboot. Now go to your phone and open up the Bluetooth menu. You want to search for new devices. You should see your device there with its new name. You should also see the keyboard symbol beside it. Click on it to pair with it. Go back to your serial monitor and make sure you've got no line ending selected again. You should now be able to type into the serial monitor and after you click enter or press send, anything you typed should appear on your phone as if it came from a keyboard. You can even write whole words. This is just a simple demonstration. I'll be doing more interesting things with the module in future videos. A huge thanks to Evan for the original video. If you're not familiar with him, definitely check out his channel. He's got loads of really cool projects. Hopefully you found this video interesting. And as always, if you have any questions, please let me know in the comment section below and I'll do my best to help out. Thanks a lot.